Hello guys, how are you? David DeFranco here from ddefranco.com, gearpop.com, defrancomedia.com, as well as mysunroom.com. Actually, no. Scratchat.com. Today's video is all about this little doohickey. This is the Neo TV Max. No, it's not an Apple TV. It looks very much like one, doesn't it? Let's not lie here, guys. But this is a streaming media box with tons of great apps, and it does come with this little remote with a keyboard on the back, which I gotta say is pretty sweet. I'll talk about this in a bit. But first, huge thanks to TechBargains.com for sponsoring this product review and making this video possible. Did you hear that little whistle when I said sponsoring? That was weird. Okay, so in one sentence, how should I describe the Neo TV Max and what it does? Well, basically, it is a streaming media box powered by Google TV. Now, yes, I have used Google TV in the past. It's not bad, guys. I mean, it's really not that bad at all. My dad has a Sony Google TV box. I'm not sure the exact model number, but I actually enjoy it very much. I mean, I actually love the thing. Not as much as my Apple TV, obviously, because I'm a huge Apple TV fan. It's definitely one of my favorite Apple products of all time, and trust me, that's saying a lot. But still, Google TV is a pretty solid OS. There's a dog barking in the background. Can you guys hear that? Hopefully it's not too distracting. Okay, so included on the Neo TV Max app-wise, and there's a lot of them, and I have a list under the camera so I don't forget, we have Netflix, Vudu, Hulu Plus, Intel Wireless Display, YouTube, Pandora, Rhapsody, Cinema Now, My Media, Yup TV, whatever that is, Data Bazaar Media, whatever that is again, TED, Spirit Clips, TV Mia, Facebook, Twitter, and much more. So basically guys, in other words, if you cannot find an app that interests you on the Neo TV Max, then you've got problems. All right, so as you know, I like to break my reviews down into pros and cons. Let's start with the list of pros. Pro number one, as I just said, is tons of choices in entertainment. I mean, seriously guys, if you can't find an app that interests you or that can keep your interest over time, then we've got other problems. I mean, between apps like Pandora, YouTube and Netflix, there's something for everyone. And believe me, that's saying a lot, guys. I love Netflix. I use Netflix every single day. I mean, I'm kind of at the point where they should be paying me with how much I promote them on sites like Twitter and Facebook. I mean, I love it that much. I just, I just can't imagine my day-to-day -day routine without Netflix. No, this is not an ad for Netflix, but hey, it should be. Per number two, and that's the fact that the Neo TV Max has a better user interface than I had predicted. And I don't mean that in a cocky way, but it's kind of the truth. I mean, I'm so used to the Apple TV, and it's no secret that the Apple TV um, is not only just a beautiful device in terms of design, but the user interface, it's very intuitive. It's not perfect, but it's one of the best UIs out there that I've seen on the TV. And yes, fortunately, that experience transfers over to the Neo TV Max. The user interface, while very similar to the Apple TV, it's not that bad. I actually enjoyed it very much. Next up on the list of pros is something the Apple TV does not have, and this is something I really appreciated, and that's the fact that this little remote here has shortcut buttons to the following apps. Netflix, Hulu Plus, Cinema Now, Vudu, Pandora, and last but certainly not least, YouTube. Okay, so let's say, for example, you're watching The Office on Netflix. As you should be, because it's an amazing show. But you suddenly have the urge to watch my videos, Chris Perlow's videos, Techno Buffalo's videos, or Soja Knows Best videos on YouTube. Well, thankfully, you can do that with the touch of a button, even though you're in another app already, such as Netflix. You literally just push this button, YouTube, and it switches over to that YouTube app within seconds. And that's something I really, really appreciated. And speaking of the remote, my next pro is about the remote. You see this? You flip it over, you get a keyboard on the back. This is a very handy feature. Now, of course, there are apps out there that can let you search um, for you, you know, using your iPhone, such as the Apple TV, Roku, and even the Neo TV Max. I believe it has a remote app, and I used it. Honestly, it didn't work that well, so I um, ended up using this little guy. And a keyboard, as you expected, it works just the way, well, you expect. It's a keyboard, guys. It's really not that special, but I gotta say, the fact that it is built into the remotes, that alone is pretty damn cool. And last but certainly not least in the list of pros is probably the most important one, and that's the fact that the content on the Neo TV Max looks and sounds awesome. So yes, whether you're watching an episode of The Office or you're playing music on Pandora, 
it sounds great. Overall, the experience is pretty sweet. But still, that goes without saying. I mean, I don't see why the content would not look sweet. It's kind of something we expect nowadays. Whether you're watching content on the Apple TV, Neo TV Max, a Roku box, or even streaming something from your Xbox 360, Wii U, or the PlayStation 3, content nowadays is going to look great no matter what. As long as you have a good bandwidth connection, I should say. And now, guys, let's move on to the more important list, because this list alone could veer you away from the Neo TV Max, but I do have other options at the end of this video, so stay tuned. The first con is the fact that the menus were sometimes unresponsive, including the remote. When I went to press buttons, stuff wouldn't happen. Apps would lock up, the keys wouldn't register on the keyboard, for whatever reason. Now this didn't happen all the time so I'm not going to use this as a major con because I even have to admit something like the Apple TV or the Sony box of uh, Google TV, again I'm not sure the exact model, sometimes those are unresponsive. It's just how technology is. Sometimes things don't respond right away and it's just something we're used to nowadays. But still I did find myself becoming a little annoyed when I would watch, uh, you know, press play for Netflix to watch an episode of The Office and things wouldn't happen until I press it the second or third time. This next con is a big one and definitely worth mentioning, and that's the fact that an app like Pandora actually quit audio playback when I went back to the home screen. Now this is something that's unexcusable in my opinion. When you're playing a music app, when you back out of said music app and you're just browsing the web or whatever on something like the iPhone, in my opinion and in my experience, the music playback should never, ever quit. There's no excuse for it. Now yes, of course, if you're going from Pandora to an app like Netflix, then yes, music playback has to quit because you'll you'll be starting playback of something else such as an episode of The Office or even a movie. But when I'm backing out of the Pandora app on the Neo TV Max and just simply browsing the other apps on the home screen, music playback should not quit. But unfortunately, it does. And guys, I gotta be honest, that's something I found really really annoying. I mean, especially when I'm playing my dubstep, the last thing I want to happen is have my dubstep stop playing just because I'm going into the settings menu. There's just no excuse for that. Next up is another big con, and that's the fact that podcasts, for whatever reason, they would not load at all. And yes, I've tried multiple different networks, including Revision 3. You guys obviously have heard of Rev3. It's a great network, and unfortunately, none of their podcasts would work. Why? I don't know, maybe it was a network issue at the time, maybe they were having server issues at the time, who knows, but the fact that none of the podcasts would work whatsoever, that's kind of a big deal in my eyes. Con number four, and this was extremely annoying, Th this alone just makes me not want to buy the Neo TV Max or suggest it. I know that's pretty brutal, but here we go. Random lockups. The box would just lock up at the most inconvenient times. Whether I'm trying to go into the Netflix app or play an episode of The Office or even just something simple as listen to music on Pandora, it would just freeze. I was forced to pull the power plug in the back and reset it. Again, just like Pandora music playback quitting, there's no excuse for this kind of behavior whatsoever. And now last on the list of cons, but certainly not least, is the fact that this thing does have poor build quality. Now this isn't a huge deal for everyone because let's face it, as soon as you plug it in on your entertainment center, you just kind of leave it there, right? You're really not forced to touch it unless it locks up, like I said, and then you have to pull the plug. But still, this sort of thing is a big deal for me. I like knowing my products are built with quality and pride. And like the Apple TV, that thing is awesome. That thing is like a nice brick. It just feels great. It's plastic, but it's high quality plastic. This, as, as you can probably hear, doesn't feel that great. It feels like it was slapped together within five minutes of like the cheapest plastic material you could find. Again, it's brutal, but I'm just being honest. This thing is not high quality at all. So the verdict, is the Neo TV Max worth it? Well, first of all, I should say it sells for just $60 on Gear Pop. Link is right below. And I gotta say that price is not bad at all, especially when you compare it to something like the Apple TV, which sells for $100. So yeah, a $40 difference is definitely pretty substantial for a lot of people. But still though, is it worth $60? I gotta say, probably not. Especially when you factor in that you can get the Roku HD, which is arguably a better product overall, for just $49 over our Gear Pop, again, link below. Then I gotta say, why would you even go for this thing in the first place? 
But if you want my opinion, if you want a more high quality experience, then just spend the extra money. Go for an Apple TV. The integration with the Mac is very nice. The integration with iCloud is very nice. And overall, I am just a huge Apple TV fanatic. But still, if you don't want the Apple TV, I definitely suggest the Roku HD over this, the Neo TV Max. I gotta say, this wasn't a horrible product overall. It just wasn't very good. So that is my review of the Neo TV Max. Guys, as I've said in the past and as I'll say in the future, I am always brutally honest in my product reviews, whether it's an Apple product, a Roku product, a Google product, or something like the Neo TV Max, I always give you my fair and honest opinions. I'm just putting that out there because I had a lot of hate on my unboxing video saying that I automatically hated this thing because it's not an Apple product. What? That doesn't even make sense. I don't care who makes the product, I will always be completely honest with you guys. But still, either way, I really did enjoy reviewing this product, which again is made possible by techbargains.com. Check them out right below. And now guys, I am out. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Stay tuned for video 1000 that should be up on Tuesday. Yeah, because Monday will be my, uh, you know, my usual weekend vlog, which is actually perfect timing because then the new Xbox reveal announcement is on Tuesday. So I will have an Xbox announcement video on Wednesday, which I'm highly looking forward to. So thank you guys so much for watching. Your ongoing support is awesome, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for liking. Peace.